Hi everyone, how's life? This is Manas and I'm back again with another video on engineering mechanics and today in this session we are going to be taking up trusses, what they exactly are, what is the math, how the actual forces are worked out or in which members the actual forces work out as you know all of these things and much more coming up in today's session. Now first of all to just start off you first need to have a feel of the concept. You need to have a feel of the structure which is known as a stress. First of all, let me just read out a definition for all of you so that you can you can get to start a relationship with trust. So just listen to this definition. So it's it's a system of connected members which have been arranged in a certain manner to serve two purposes. Those two purposes are number one, number one, to withstand the loads, load withstanding. Let me just write this load withstand. Okay withstand or you can also say in a certain way you have to support the loads and the second purpose that these huge system of different members these system of combination do is that they share the loads share and transfer the loads so these are basically the two purposes or the two objectives the two objectives of a trust let me just write the two objective of a truss. Now there are plenty of examples which I can give you but before before giving you those examples let me tell you something. Well so far in mechanics what have we learned or so far in mechanics what are the what is the nature of the force that you have actually dealt with. In case of general case of forces on a plane in case of uh, even in friction and uh, e even in some other problems even in uh, when I taught you the lecture based on uh, work there also in all the problems the one thing which was common between the forces that those forces all those forces were of external nature all those forces were of external nature let me just write external but in this case when you talk about trusses when you talk about system of members connected in a certain way okay in that case the forces well they are going to be internal the reason being very simple because because of this internal force we can actually work out the internal stresses and from these internal stresses we can actually work out the dimensions of the members dimension of members for designing a particular structure for designing a particular structure a structure or a truss you can say and there are some other assumptions also. I'll come to that in this article. But for now, let me just summarize. What is trust? Trust is nothing but a system of members connected in a particular way to, to serve two objectives. Number one being is to support the loads. Whichever load is placed at the joint, all the members should be such that they, they need to support the loads. And secondly, to share and transfer the loads. So these are the two objectives of any structure, of any trust in particular let's see now let us talk about some of the beautiful examples of trust let me just rub this so that we can move forward and let me just show you let me just show you i'm not going to be drawing them rather <laughs> i'll be using the software to show you some examples so here they are now there are going to be two examples and there is a, an example within an example first of all just take a look at this some of the roof trusses now this is something that you would find in switzerland or even Kashmir, the roof of the houses. Okay, the anatomy is something like this. If you take a look at this, this is nothing but a roof truss, but a Pratt roof truss. Okay, then take a look at this one. This is how roof truss. And finally, we have this Fink roof truss. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> now, let us take a look at some of the bridge trusses. Now, trusses are pretty much, pretty much implementable in case of uh, bridge design and uh, just take a look at this this is pratt then we've got how then we've got varen we've got baltimore we've got k trust all of these are beautiful designs and in order to work out these designs carefully you need to understand the axial forces if i were to say axial forces that won't be right uh, the correct word would be internal axial forces that is something which we need to work out in each and every problem of plane truss. Why am I telling plane truss? Because the truss 
or the problems of trust that we are going to be working out will be such that the members will be along a particular plane and preferably if this is x and this is y we are going to be working out all the forces acting along the members of a truss on the x y plane let me make it very clear we are going to be dealing with all the problems based on a plane stress and if i get some time i'll be making videos on space truss also that is a 3d version of a truss you can say that so these were basically the all the examples of a roof truss as i told you kashmir switzerland roof houses anatomy and then we've got bridge truss in the form of warren baltimore k truss beautiful okay one more thing now let us let us get into the details let me just write something about the math of truss so these two topics are over what truss you know system of connected members arranged in a certain particular way to serve two purposes one is to withstand the load and second is to transfer the load okay then let us talk about the math of truss because whenever you try to arrange members in this particular way they may collapse also they might not collapse they may collapse they might be rigid they might not be rigid a particular truss can be defined as a perfect truss and a particular truss cannot be defined as a particular truss or a perfect truss let's say so is there a way is there a math is there rather a mathematical equation which can help us which can really help us in determining which truss has a, let's say which truss is perfectly rigid or let's say which truss is a perfect one which truss is collapsible that means on application of load it will collapse uh, that is something which is absolutely undesirable okay as an engineer you need to make sure that the truss should be non collapsible it may be over rigid but it has to be non collapsible okay so now i'm going to be writing this equation just just take a look at this equation m plus 3 equals to 2g okay so what's m let me just write this first of all m a is nothing but the number of members number of members secondly what about j j is nothing but the number of joints so you got to use this formula always whenever you come across any problem based on truss and whether you, if you need to identify whether it is a collapsible truss or a non collapsible truss whether it is a rigid truss or a non rigid truss or an even what do you call under rigid truss you need to use this equation and let me tell you how this equation can essentially be used first of all m is the number of members j is the number of joints so if you've got a truss like this let's say you've got a support over here then you've got a roller support here okay and then you've got another one you need to work out whether this is a perfect truss or not so you simply need to use this equation if 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 m plus 3 is equal to 2j it's the case of a perfect truss perfect truss you can also call it aka you can also call it a rigid truss okay so let us try to work out whether this over here is a perfect truss or not so how many members so there are 1 2 and 3 let me just write this the number of members are 3 so 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 m is going to be equal to 3 how many joints 1 2 3 very simple n is equal to 3 just try to plug in all these values into this equation if you do so in that case lhs is equal to how much m that is 3 3 plus 3 is 6 lhs is going to be equal to 6 and if you put that value of n over here not n this is m this is number of joints that is j so 3 times of 2 is 6 so lhs is equal to 6 and rhs is also equal to 6 so when lhs is equal to rhs then that is the case of a perfect truss then that is the case of a rigid truss okay you don't have to worry as a design engineer you don't have to worry and by the way this topic is extremely important for all the civil engineers okay because civil engineers are very important even for mechanical engineers whenever the erection of even a plant power plant let's say erection of an industry the starting the starting phase of an industry civil engineers are required might be for surveying and once surveying is done then it is followed by erection of the plant it's very important 
to, to set up the plant, civil engineers are required. And to run that plant continuously, to keep the machines operating always, you need mechanical engineers. Okay. So that's it. And now, another one. If M plus 3 is greater than 2J, in that case, you would call that arrangement as an over rigid one over rigid truss remember all these things these are very fundamental you might come across objective problems where you will be given four options four figures and you need to work out which one of them is an over rigid truss and that's how you need to work out okay you can you simply need to you simply need to compare the lhs with the rhs if the lhs is equal to the rhs it's a perfectly rigid truss or a perfect truss let me say if lhs is more than rhs it's an over rigid truss that means that means let me just write a statement i wrote a beautiful statement has more members than required to be rigid has more members than required to be rigid more members let me just write this members than required to be rigid very beautiful statement let me explain that to you once again so if the value of lhs works out as greater than rhs in that case it is suggesting that first of all it is an over rigid truss that means it has more members than required to be a perfect truss to be a rigid truss simple and final case m plus 3 less than 2j if this is the case then this is known as an under rigid truss okay make sure that your truss does not fall into this category otherwise there is going to be a lot of devastation okay and you might lose your job <laughs> so this has less members has less members less members than required for a rigid truss than required for a rigid truss as simple now i just uh, just when i started this topic i told you that Designing a stress is not enough. Okay, connecting different members together and making a system of members and calling that a truss is not enough. You need to know that on application of load, whether that truss is going to collapse or not. So let me just make a claim. If this is the case, when LHS is equal to RHS, in that case, the truss will be non-collapsible let me just write this non-collapsible when it's an over rigid case when lhs is greater than rhs again this is a non-collapsible case but when lhs is less than rhs when m plus 3 is less than 2j in that case the truss is collapsible and when such a thing happens your career may also collapse as a civil engineer so make sure this never happens Okay, so this was all about the mathematics of trust. Now let me talk about all the basic assumptions. So, so, so here we go. Let me rub all of this and please note all of this down. Pause the video and silently take a screenshot. Okay, keep on taking screenshots or keep on making notes also. Your wish. मेरा भोला है भंडारी करता नंदी की सवारी ओ शंकर नाथ रे ओ शंभु नाथ रे भोले बाबा न न न न न न ओके नाउ अनदर इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग लेट अस टॉक अबाउट बेसिक अस्सम्शंस हियर वी गो Basic assumptions. So I'll be just reading them one by one and they'll pop up in the screen over here. So what are the basic assumptions? Okay, so the first assumption is listen to this very carefully and better to write it down. The number one assumption is joints are assumed to be pin connections. Something like this. Something like this. Um, uh, there is a member over here. And how can I draw it? There is another member right below and then there is a pin pin right here so so this pin over here all the joints have to be connected with the help of pins this is basically the assumption or our first assumption okay 
second one second assumption is that the load uh, will be applied at the joints only which essentially means load r to be applied at the joints which means it's going to be something like this here this is where you can apply the loads this is absolutely correct in case of a truss but when you do this this is not allowed you cannot apply the load along the length of the member this is your second assumption okay for a truss okay once this is done let me talk about the third assumption uh, this third assumption is on your screen the members are straight two force members so what do we mean by that two force members members are straight and two force members something like this watch this the this is a member and this is also a member so by two force member i mean to say a force it's a pair i mean this these forces are such that they are trying to compress the member and the forces could be like this could be like this okay and these are also collinear secondly the forces could be like this they will try to pull the bar in that case we call it to be a tensile tensile force let's say okay again the members are straight to force members so that was it weight of the members these members their weights are extremely small okay so the weight of the members are not supposed to be taken into account the weights are going to be extremely small what is the next one truss is statically determinate have you ever heard about this sentence not sentence but a word statically determinate something which is statically calculatable statically statically determinate what the hell is this statically determinate what does this mean when you talk about statically you are basically referring to statics okay what is determinate i'll tell you from statics we know that there are three equations of equilibrium summation of fx0 and let me just talk about these two equations summation of fy0 which essentially means with the these two equations with these two equations of statics alone you will be able to work out the reactions as well as the axial forces in members again let me talk about this fifth assumption it says that this truss is statically determinate so what this essentially means is that all the values of axial forces in the members can be worked out simply by applying the equations of statics alone nothing else needs to be worked out you don't need to know how much uh, how, how much deformation has taken place in any one particular or in any particular member you don't need to know that you just need to apply the equations of statics and you will be able to work out all the axial forces in different members of a given truss if you are able to do so if you are able to implement all these things then that truss is statically determinate we'll say that <coughs> okay so these were all the basic assumptions now tell me let me tell you some some cheat codes which are going to be awesome to help you to help you find find zero force members what is this all about well you just need to wait let me wrap this So there are going to be two cheat codes, and let me just list them as case one and case two. So first of all, let us talk about case one. So when you talk about case one, just take a look at this figure. So we've got a member over here, exactly, and we also have a member here. Okay, done, and they've been connected with each other with the help of a simple pin. We know that very well. So if you've got if you've got a joint. that means there is obviously one joint with two members okay and also without 
any external force without any external force or load let's say load or force whatever you may refer it to as then in such a case in such a case the force amongst these members let's say member 1 and member 2 then in that case f1 is equal to f2 and by the way both of them are going to be equal to zero listen to this once again i should get drilled inside your memory if you've got a joint and if there are two members at a particular joint and there is no force there is no force acting on this joint there is no force acting on this joint in that case in that case this member member one and member two they'll have zero newton as their actual force There's absolutely no actual force in those two members let me just explain you that with the help of an example let's say we've got a truss something like this and here we go we've got something like this arrangement yeah done and we've got this yeah let's say we apply a force over here and let's say this is member one and this is member two and we've got an arrangement like this isn't it in that case what will happen is just take a look f1 if you see this is the joint this is the joint and these are the two members member one and member two now these two members are at the joint and there is no other force external force acting on this joint in that case f1 is going to be equal to f2 which is also going to be equal to zero so this is how you need to apply cheat code one two members at a particular joint with no external force acting at the joint in that case the force in both the members in both the members is going to be equal to zero this is how you need to apply remember pause the video take a screenshot okay and once the video is over you can obviously make your notes okay let's talk about case two very interesting <laughs> and by the way if you don't believe all these things well, you can obviously work them out by using the method of joints which i'll be taking up in the next video don't worry everything will follow in a particular sequence and by the way all the problems based on uh, method of joints method of sections they have been covered up the theory portion was left based on trust and lot of the students actually made a comment that sir do make a theory video on trust that's exactly what i'm doing okay okay case two well in case two it's it's very interesting just take a look at this so there are going to be three members now member one member two and this is going to be member three let me just mark them one two and this is three so obviously there is a joint that we are going to be focusing on now this joint there are three members okay connected at this joint right now even here there is no external force on the joint let me state the conditions very properly so we've got three members at the joint okay and two members two members out of the three members two members are collinear collinear if you watch carefully here member 1 and member 2 are member 1 and member 2 are collinear when that is so and third member third member is well at a certain angle you don't have to worry about that third member will obviously be at a certain angle when that is the case when that is the case then when that is the case then the force in the third member is going to be working out as zero let me summarize let me summarize there are a whole lot of things in this in this cheat code it goes like this so there are going to be three members acting at a joint fine with no external force acting on this joint fine with two members collinear that is member one and member two collinear okay tick on all these points when that is so then the third member member three will have zero newton as the internal axial force remember these two things these are going to be very important especially 
especially when you come across objective problems based on plain trusses. So these were all the cheat codes. Okay, two cheat codes, you can apply them pretty easily. And let me just explain this with the help of a simple example, then you can have a better idea. And let me just wrap this. So make sure, if you have not noted this down, pause the video, take a screenshot. Here we go. Let's, let's <coughs> do an example. Okay, by taking examples, we can actually bolster our concepts very well. So, you've got a truss over here. Let me just draw this. Uh, it's, it's something like this. Um, yeah, like this. Here, here, here. Here we go. And what else? Like this, like this. Toing, toing, done. Then there are members, not members, but forces. So these were the supports. So they've been replaced by the support reactions, basically. And then there is a only one single force acting. And this is force P. Now let's say, let's say, let's take a look at this portion, this joint. You can clearly see this member over here, let's call this as one, let's call this as two. Member over here, member two, they are collinear, fine. And actually at joint G, joint G, if you, if you focus carefully, let this be in a member three. Okay. So there are three members. All right. Three members. Then uh, one and two are collinear. Secondly, there is no external force. In that case, the third member, third member or the force in the third member is obviously going to work out as zero. That means this is the zero member force. So this is actually you need to work out. This is more of a hit and trial approach and I'll be taking up an example. Okay. And we'll be implementing both the cases and we'll be trying to work out as to which are the members where the actual force uh, becomes zero. Let us take up that example. So guys, here is the problem. What you need to do is you need to find the zero force members. You need to work out just by the hit and trial approach and just by the two cheat codes, which I've given to you uh, with the help of those cheat codes, we need to work out the name of those members where the actual force is going to be equal to zero. Again, let me summarize. There were two cheat codes, one based on two members at a joint, while the other based on three members at a joint. Okay. And the, in the first case, uh, two members were at the joint with no external force on the joint. And at the same time, those two members were not collinear. Remember this, they were not collinear. But in the third case, in the third case, there were three members acting at a particular joint with no external force and two members were collinear. And the third member will have zero axial force, zero newton axial force. Now let us take a look at this. So just try to, let us randomly start. From where are we going to start? Just take a look at this. Take a look at this. B. Just take a look at this. There are two members. AB and BD. And there is another member BC. So if you watch carefully, AB and BD are collinear. And this is the third member. These two are collinear with no external force on B. In that case, this third member will have zero actual force. So we have got our first answer zero axial force okay it's it's going to be that simple zero axial force so first one is bc b c and where did we focused on the joint it was b so let me just underline second okay so we have worked out essentially one member where the uh, axial force was zero another mm, let us randomly take a look this has become zero okay Anything else? Anything else? <coughs> yeah, we've got one more. We've got one more. So if you watch carefully, just try to focus on this member. Member G. So if you watch EG and GI. Now on member G, there are three members acting. That is FG, EG and IG. There is no external force also on this member, on this joint G. And at the same time, these two members, that is member EG and GI, they are collinear. That means this third member is going to have zero axial force. So the second option is FG 
and where did we focus we focused on g so that's done anything else let me just think let me just think let me just think fg is also done okay just focus on this joint beautiful focus on this joint if you watch carefully hj and jl these are collinear members and actually there are three members on this very joint j two of which are collinear and there is even no external force that means this third member that is jk will have zero axial force let me point out j was taken as the joint where we focused okay fourth answer so if you watch carefully if you watch carefully just take a look on this joint k can you work something out okay any member in association with k that is kl ki kj is already done and kh one of these members is actually zero so if you watch carefully this has already been neutralized jk is already zero okay jk is already zero so i have marked a zero over here so essentially if this is zero and there were initially four members kl kj kh and ki there were actually four members out of which one member is automatically zero that means we are left with again three members so you can apply cheat code too so if you want to apply cheat code too you're going to have three members kl ki and kh three members done two of which are collinear with no external force acting on this member in that case this third member will have zero axial force this third member will have zero axial force and that is your member h k and where did we focus we focused on this joint k done very easy another one h i h i will also be zero just take a look at this focus on h just try to focus on h if you watch carefully h joint h has four members connected to it j h k h i h f h out of which one member is already zero so essentially we are left with only three members that is j h i h and f h so if you watch carefully f h and j h they are collinear and there is no external force on h that means this third member will have zero axial force in that case this h i is also be going to be equal to zero the force in h i is also going to be equal to zero so this is also done very easy where did we focus we focused on h okay so these are all the zero force member there is also one more member left zero force members isn't this easy okay so we've got one two three four five one more is left which one is left let me just check this over here just focus how many members one two three four out of which one is one is practically zero that means we are left with one two and three members so we got three members on a joint two members are collinear and there is no external force that means this third member will automatically have zero axial force so we've got the answer answer is f i we have focused on i now some of you guys might be thinking why did not why i did not consider this joint e even if you focus on joint e even if you focus on joint e you can clearly see that there are four members and there is already a load acting so you cannot apply either of the cheat code even if you focus on this joint c joint c has uh, essentially there are three members one two and three this one is already zero so you cannot practically take into use so there are three members three members but there is already a force acting and whenever there is a force acting you cannot apply either of the cheat code this is the basic idea so that's the final call this is basically hit and trial approach you can keep on analyzing joint by joint and then you can work out all the answers pretty easily so this was just a basic introduction as to what the concept of truss is remember let me just summarize when you talk about a truss you are talking about a system of connected members which has two prime objectives one it is to is to support and withstand the load and second is to transfer the loads okay then then we saw some examples we saw some examples based on a roof truss and also a bridge truss then we we spoke about the math of truss you remember m plus 3 is equal to 2j perfect truss m plus 3 greater than 2j uh, over rigid truss and m plus 3 less than 2j under rigid truss the initial two options were non collapsible but the final option that is the under rigid truss 
that was collapsible, isn't it? Then we learned the basic assumptions, basic assumptions, beautiful. Pin connections are there between the members and then we spoke about that the loads have to be applied at the joint only. If you don't apply the load at the joint, then we won't consider that member or we won't regard that member as a truss, not member, but we won't regard that structure as a truss. We spoke about that the members are straight two force members, then uh, weight of the members are negligible and finally that the truss is going to be statically, a, what do you call, determinant which is essentially means that on applying the equations of statics you can work out the reactions as well as the internal axial forces. Then you learn two cheat codes, one was based on two members. Cheat code number one said, if you've got two members, this, this, at a joint with no external force on the joint and those two members are not collinear, in that case both the members are going to have zero axial forces. Then there was uh, another cheat code which had one joint and three members, three members Two members were collinear there was no external force and the third member is obviously going to have zero internal axial force and then we apply all of those cheat codes to work out this very example so try to do this on a plain sheet of paper and uh, that's it that's it for today i'm going to see you again with a video on method of joints and that is going to be beautiful beautiful and so i'm going to be meeting you guys tomorrow until then take care have a nice day keep learning keep watching thank you